Now, about these munafiqeen, another phenomenon. These munafiqeen of Medina are from elsewhere. Because it was a tribal society. Supposing I am a true mu'min And my brother, he is a munafiq. But he is my brother. So whenever these things, you know, they came to surface that these munafiqeen are doing this. And then there was criticism against them. And maybe some action was thought to be taken against them. These people, you know, the true moments would come and say, No, O Messenger of Allah, have mercy on him. He is my brother. So you just excuse him, please. He is my close relative. He has committed a mistake. I know he is not a munafiq. He, he loves you. It's just by chance that he has committed this mistake. So this is intercession. Shafa'a. Now the rule is, Man yashfa shafa'atan hasanatan yakun lahum naseebum minha. Now these two ayat, please note. If we take them generally, they are the social etiquettes of a Muslim society. But if you put them in context, the discussion about munafiqeen is coming. Then you know, in the context, these are the meanings which I am explaining. Otherwise, they are just etiquettes. In human society, there is always, you recommend somebody. You make some intercession somewhere. It happens. Now this intercession or recommendation can be either right or wrong. Either it is correct or it is wrong. So if you have made a correct intercession, you will get the reward of Allah. And if you have made a wrong recommendation, you will be punished for this. So this is the general etiquette. Man yashfa shafaatan hasanatan yakul lahu naseebum minha. Whosoever is making a good recommendation, a good and correct intercession, he will get a portion from it. Portion of the reward. وَمَنْ يَشْفَى شَفَاتًا سَيِّئَةً And whosoever is doing this intercession but wrongly, his recommendation is based on falsehood. يَكُنْ لَهُ كِفْلُمْ مِنْهَا He will not be spared then. He will have to bear the responsibility. He will get a portion of the punishment. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ مُقِيْتًا And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the controller of everything. Now as a general principle, it is a general etiquette in the Muslim society. Always see before interceding somewhere, before making any recommendation somewhere, either you are doing it rightly or wrongly. But here in the context it is for the munafiqeen, because it was a mixed society. One brother is munafiq, the other is a true woman. What happened, you know, to Abdullah ibn Ubay, he was the Raisul munafiqeen. The chief of the Munafiqin of Badina. But his son, Abdullah ibn Abdullah ibn Ubayi, he was a very true Mu'min. So that has happened. He came to the Prophet ﷺ when Abdullah ibn Ubayi, when he died, he requested, Give me your shirt, O Messenger of Allah. I want to give this shroud, this coffin, to my father. After all, he was his father. And he was his son. He knew that he is Munafiq. When the Muslim army was returning from Ghazwa to Banil Mustariq, and during that Ghazwa, you know, this, this person, Abdullah ibn Ubayi, had spoken much against the Prophet and the Muhajireen. When they were returning, this son, you know, Abdullah ibn Abdullah, with a bare sword, he stood at the gate of Medina. And he said, to his father, I won't let you in unless you accept that you are Zaleel and Muhammad is Aziz. Because he had said, if we return to Medina, we the honorable ones, we shall, we shall turn them out, these people, you know, these weaklings who had come to us as refugees, we gave them the refuge. And now they come and you know, they, they think they are equal to us. He said, you have to accept that Muhammad and his companions are Aziz. They are honorable. 
not you. So that was his, his demand. But at the time of death, he came, give me the shirt. And the Prophet gave the shirt. And when Hazrat Umar said, What are you doing, Ya Rasulullah? To this Munafiq, you are giving your shirt. And the reply was, My shirt will not be able to save him from the punishment of hell. If you know, I accept the request of a bowman, what harm to me? But this is not going to save him from the divine punishment. Anyhow, من يشفى شفاة حسنة يكون له نصيب منها ومن يشفى شفاة سيئة يكون له كفل منها وكان الله على كل شيء مقيتا وإذا حييتم بتحية فحيوا بأحسن منها أو ردوها إن الله كان على كل شيء حسيبا and when you are greeted with a greeting return it in a better form or at least the same when somebody says to you, Assalamu alaikum, you should say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You give him something more. Or at least return it as such. Now, why? What happened with the munafiqeen? Because at the heart, they had the enmity of the Muslims, true moments. If a mumin said to him, Assalamu alaikum. Well, he would reply, you know, reluctantly. Alaikum. As if he has done his duty. But if he is a true moment, he would say, Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is again a general etiquette also. And here in the context, it actually refers to the conduct and the behavior of the munafiqs. Wa iza huyyitum bi tahiyyatin fahayyu bi ahsana minha awrudduha. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ حَسِيبًا Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take everything in his accounting. He is the very big accountant of all the deeds and sayings of all the peoples. Allah la ilaha illahu Allah is he that there is no ilah except him. Allahu, this is Mubtada. Allahu, la ilaha illahu, this is Khabar. Allah is the one who is the only God, only Allah, only Allah, and there is no Allah besides Him. La yajmanna kumila yomil qiyamah. He will surely gather you together on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection. La yajmanna kum, emphasis. No escape. Ain al mafar kalla la wazar ila Rabbi ka yoma idin il mustaqar. No mafar, no place to to flee or to run away. La yajman kum ila yom al qiyamat ila ray bafi. Why actually these bunafikin? They just had forgotten that the day of judgment is to come. And why do we commit sins? We just forget. That we have to face that grand accountability of the day of judgment. There is no doubt about it. Look to the emphasis. Then repetition. There is no doubt about it. And who can be more truer in his saying, in his statement than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is telling you, Allah is saying this, who can be more true in his saying and statement? Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim, wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikr al-Hakim.